Welcome to another episode of the Day Witness podcast. Uh, for some of you who've been following us, welcome back. Um, for those who are new to the Day Witness podcast, we will be discussing the topic on discrimination, particularly in Norway. So over uh, many of the episodes, uh, we will be uh, introducing people with minority background who uh, will share their lived experiences in Norway, um, where they'll be talking about the kind of different discrimination um, that they've had experiences. We also have like experts coming in as well um, who also discovered discrimination either in their research or in their field um, of study um, looking into this particular area. So today we have uh, Sally, um, who is from uh, Subic uh, in the Philippines. Um, she also works as a nurse specialist in an emergency unit in Indra, Usfold municipality. She is also a registered Filipino-Norwegian interpreter and also the founder and president of the Filipino Helping Society in Norway, abbreviated as FHS. So she moved to Norway in December 2012, and as an FHS leader, uh, Sally contributes to um, the mission of enabling Filipinos and other minority groups here in Norway to flourish uh, through mutual trust and also help. Uh, today we're particularly we'll be looking into au pairs, um, uh, the au pair community and the discrimination that they have experienced, um, but also uh, your own personal experiences as well uh, through your other um, work um, and how discrimination came up as well. Mm -hmm. So welcome, Sally. Thank you. And yeah, I'm just really excited that, uh, like I mentioned to you a while ago, uh, I came from an interpretation situation, so my head is full of Norwegian and Filipino words. So uh, pardon me if I'm not, yeah, <laughs> I cannot find the, the correct English terms if I, uh, the things that I need to say, but yeah, just bear on me. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I think we all, like, who are multilingual, will always have those moments. And uh, I'm sure many of you who have been following my work, you've seen me slip up uh, many times. But I don't think there is um, any shame or any, mm. you know, uh, problem around it. Because I think it's, um, uh, I think in terms of languages, when we go into different languages, we... Um, also think in a different way as well uh, mm. in a cultural context and I think that's the brilliance of, of a lot of these interview and the, the beauty of it you know in being mm. able to speak more than la one language really. Um, so why don't you first uh, explain a little bit about the work in FHS and what do you do and um, how this society is, is, um, is, is helping au pairs? Yeah um, actually we, in FHS like you've mentioned about the mission is we're actually uh, helping each other. We have this, what we call, helping cycle, where we have volunteers trying to um, pay forward, and they're also uh, receiving help, the other aspects that they need help to, and then provide help, and then, yeah, as it goes, and spread this help to other people. So when au pairs, uh, yeah, people who are here as au pairs or students, or even professionals, they come to us with different, yeah, maybe different uh, agenda and different goals. Uh, au pairs come to us to like for them to have a network, yeah. and of course uh, utilize the, the their skills and their talents from their home country that they cannot really apply here in Norway because they're like limited to their. Uh, it's not even a job description, but they role as an au pair. Yeah. So people with a lot of talents in yeah, journalism, writing, documentation, they cannot really apply this at home in, yeah, in a situation as an au pair. So they come to us and we have a lot of tasks they produce. So, so if you will check on our website and check on our Facebook, those things that we produce, those are um, outputs of our talented au pairs that they yeah before they don't have this uh, avenue to to like express mm. or utilize and until the the time that they just forgot about uh, their their talent so so we are here actually um, not only to to provide them a sense of belongingness as a network but also for them to actually uh, yeah don't uh, 
uh, for them to be reminded that the, the skills that they, they took with them uh, immigrating to Norway, this is something that we really appreciate. And this is something that the Norwegian society would appreciate also. So that's what we do. And in return, we help them with immigration or immigration integration uh, projects that we have. We have Norwegian courses, we have Sprock office, mentor program. So things that they that they need to better integrate in the Norwegian society, while they also, uh, with everything that they have from before, provide to Norwegian. So it's like a uh, helping si- cycle in a much more bigger uh, perspective, mm. like them with uh, through FHS and Norwegian society. Mm. So so we have a lot of projects, and we, yeah. We just continue because there's a lot of opportunities and we have a lot of lovely au pairs uh, coming in to volunteer and get some help. Hmm. So it's, it's a very like wide range of things, you know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and I think that's, uh, that's the beauty of, of having that kind of space mm-hmm. is that even though you're an au pair, you also have other talented skills as well that um, mm. should be able to have room for that. Mm. Um, and I think I, you know, um, as I understand it as well, because of this community that you that is built up by F- FHS, mm. you also heard a lot of stories as mm. well mm. Um, regarding discrimination. Mm. And you were an au pair yourself, yeah. as I understood, mm. uh, which kind of made you motivated into going into this work. Mm. So could you walk through maybe some of those stories maybe you've heard or even um, you can share your own as well um, of... Uh, the kind of discrimination that rose up uh, mm. becoming uh, an au pair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so uh, like I've mentioned, uh, I've moved to Norway in December 2012, like uh, Christmas time, in a very cold winter in um, the south of Norway, where I started as an au pair in a family of doctors. And uh, I was uh, really excited because like when when you mention discrimination and and, and say uh, connected in au pair, au pair means like equal, and uh, th- then you like to to expect that you'll be treated fairly equally, and of course Norway is an European country, and you expect uh, a lot of like you'll be treated better here, and it was a good start. I, did uh, get well very yeah in the in the start uh, and then later yeah because um, my host family uh, it's a little bit complicated because I'm not living in my host family the time I need to live in their or, or the the host dad's family uh, and I needed to help both families for. A same uh, amount of allowance, hmm. and uh, set up uh, because um, the the, um, the rationality they, they told me because there's a sick family member in the original family or the, the father's family, and at the same time a newborn, uh, a, a one year old baby in the other family, and both needs help from me who they knew was a graduate or a registered nurse in the Philippines. So, yeah, so I was like, I, I had a very impossible <laughs> role that time because uh, for, in, a, in the first place, I, I was actually thinking of helping an, one family and uh, the family, and uh, I wasn't expecting that I'll be also asked to, to take care of a critically ill Mm. Family member while also taking care of uh, a very small child, mm. and uh, the child became a big brother. Not so, <laughs> not so long time ago. It's like months uh, in between. So mm. we have a newborn. So so like it was really uh, for me. It was very hard. But as Filipinos, we are we have this kind of resilience. Like you've been yeah put in this position. You going to make it, uh, yeah, no, no matter how hard it is. And uh, that was my mentality back then, but um, uh, it was not only that, the, 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 what we call abuse of the, the system. It's also how they, they treat me. Hmm. So I was like, 
they, they have this, uh, like, I was thinking if you're an au pair, uh, you get to do some of the jobs, not everything. Like, they do have their own roles also, that they're a big family. And, uh, um, and I was thinking, okay, maybe I, I'll do my part and they also do going to do their part. But in the end, it would be like, yeah, I need to like, to, to, to do most of the job and for them to, to do their usual thing. And for me, it's not really fair. And it's like, they're going to take a vacation. I'll be, yeah, be left in the house, to take care and clean the house. And I was thinking, okay, uh, this yeah, feels like not so fair. And in terms of the Norwegian classes, because we are actually entitled of going to free classes that time. And uh, I really needed to beg for the host that to like can you enroll me because well i don't really i, I didn't really feel that he's actually planning to to enroll me to something that everything about their family uh, the needs of their family mm -hmm. they have like good control of what they really need of me but my needs i think there was yeah there wasn't really in the priority so so and uh, in that time, um, I was 22 years old. I'm already a registered nurse, and uh, uh, I, if, yeah, and and I have a very good background in the Philippines, like academically, and 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 there, coming to the family where I will be judged how good am I in cleaning, how good am I in preparing food. Uh, everything has their comments, uh, uh, everyone has their comments, and uh, like the cultural exchange part was, I, I tried to cook uh, Filipino, or I tried to, to cook many Filipino dishes, but so it's like, okay, uh, like they're, they're trying to, to, to know, but there's, there's always like a feeling of me like, okay, maybe just, they're just trying, but they're not really interested of, of knowing my culture it's like like just to to to, to, to be able to, to do that and show me that they're trying and and there was yeah uh, and I had also my personal problems I right then I, I lost my grandmom while I was with them and uh, because of financial problems I wasn't able to fly home and I was so depressed at that time because of the entire situation. I didn't feel like I get a lot of support and my network was so small. I, I didn't know. I, I, I have a friend who is uh, in Denmark and she's the one who invited me. So in Norway, so actually I have zero network. They tried to, to tell me, oh, go to church, find friends. It, it wasn't that easy. So, and then I feel like, I felt like uh, I, I began to, to question my purpose, not not just in Norway, my purpose in life. Like, uh, I, I was like, maybe in a uh, in, um, state of depression. I, and they're a family of doctors, I mentioned. So, they took a blood test of me, and because I said that I, I, I think I'm pr getting problem with memory. So, so it it went that far to the like, to manifest in my physical health, and I was like, I, I can lie in the bed for the entire month, not eating, not drinking. I was that uh, depressed. I'm not sure if it's because of my personal problems alone the situation at home alone, the boat home, because I needed to, to, to work so early to, to, to clean for the first house, do everything there, transfer to other house, which is, by the way, a uh, half an hour distance that I need to walk. So do everything, the task for that other house, come back, and yeah, th there's... Like physically, I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. Mentally, emotionally, I was like, 
um, yeah, so so I was uh, like I said, I was beginning to question my purpose, and I was like to the point that I'm maybe I was like in the edge of having like suicidal thoughts on on that uh, the time, and uh, this I'm just talking about months of staying on that uh, with that family, and I I yeah, luckily I found friends. Who, who uh, yeah, they they're also pairs. So, but they they know people that uh, and that their host families, and they're exchanging stories about our experience. And my experience was totally different from theirs. And they were like, okay, uh, at the end, they they really don't know how to to help me because my my uh, au pairs usually have uh, off on the weekends and me. They needed me mostly on the weekends, and yeah, because yeah, I was like needed to to help them their needs to to, to fulfill my my duty, and at the end they're just saying that uh, maybe it's just it's just okay to to like follow the the rules and the hope because they're the au pairs, my friends, they they didn't know actually how to to solve my problems, and then. Until the, such time that uh, I, I, maybe I woke up with the reality that this is something that I do not deserve, and uh, but I wasn't conf- confident enough to to talk to them. Uh, the, the language barrier is impossible, so I was speaking in English. But I tried to to look uh, into sites because uh, that time um, I yeah. I didn't know about the organizations helping up pairs in the yeah so we had like this seminar in the Philippines before flying to to Norway and that's it about the help from the the, the government and upon arriving it's like getting your visa and your card and that's it I was not aware that there are also organization in that area that were helping so I needed to 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 um Browse the internet to find what are my rights. Mm. I wrote like a twenty-two page of like uh, claim that uh, you're not treating me right, and at the end, I I needed to. I I just lost it. I just needed to to provide them the the uh, like explanation why I did that, and I said that the, I I. I I remember so clearly, clearly all of them were in the house. It's like the the parents of my host dad, the the siblings. They're actually a total of four, and the host parents and the children. There are many. So apparently, I was alone uh, against the majority of them, and I was like saying that I I felt like I'm not treated. I was treated as a human. So I was, yeah, I came to that point, the lowest point in my life uh, that I I told them that um, I wasn't happy and uh, I felt like this, the entire setup was so unfair on my part and I wanted to, yeah, to finish my, yeah, the contract, like abruptly Mm. with them and that took me 10 months. So I was with them within the entire 10 months trying to survive and trying to, to figure out, and uh, because uh, at the first I had this benefit of the doubt that yeah, maybe because they're just also a lot, they they're experiencing a lot of uh, challenges with the sick family member, with the the new family members coming in, and uh, their work and personal life. So I was like, uh, I'm I'm a nurse, so I was like, I need to understand where they're coming from. But at the end, uh, I told myself that. Um, it was it was also necessary for me to think about my own situation because I, yeah, the thing that it, it, it went down to that part that I was thinking of different ways to like end everything, mm-hmm. and that is something like I have never thought of before when I was in the Philippines. So there's something I couldn't recall because I. I the time as like my memory, I have this short memory loss. I'm not sure because of the 
stress I've experienced. Mm. But uh, at the end, so I, 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 without the job, and without the because my visa is actually dependent on on that au pair uh, mm. contract. Without the job, I moved to a friend, and um, that is in two thousand thirteen in November came Hayan, and I was not thinking about. I was thinking, okay, uh, worst case scenario, I flew to the Philippines. That's it. That's okay. Mm. Uh, and came Hayan to the Philippines, destroyed yeah many parts of the Philippines, and that there was the time that I found the FHS actually. You found FHS. FHS. Yeah, so I found FHS, and the main goal then back then was to help the Filipinos back in the Philippines. And during that time, I was not thinking about my future in the north. I, like I thought that uh, okay, this may might be not something for me, but uh, through that uh, initiative with FHS, is it was called. Honi Honi Olaf the Filipina. That is, that was the original name mm. uh, to help the the typhoon victims. So I was not I was not totally uh, forgot about my problem, my situation that time, and uh, began uh, uh, getting help for for uh, our fellow countrymen in the Philippines. And then uh, through that organization, I found also my uh, host family, mm. the second one who. Uh, accommodated me and um, yeah everything I, I moved to Fredrikstad in Oswald and uh, yeah uh, by the time um, I I began recovering mm. from the, the experience and I told them everything the, the, the second host for me I told them everything and um, and but I told them that I, I, I truly understand and Maybe, uh, maybe there's they they have this the reasons. Maybe they lack uh, knowledge about what the per program should be, how the the treatment uh, to to me as an pair should be. So so I have this still the the benefit of the doubt that maybe they are just stressed out because of their situation. Maybe I came on the wrong time. Maybe I saw I did something that. They're not so yeah. So it's not of like victim blaming, but I will I will I'm that kind of person that doesn't like to hold grudges. So I want I just wanted to to move on with my life, but um, still, uh, whenever I I can recall, I can visit because I have like uh, what do you call this uh, uh, photographic memory. Mm. I can I can remember the entire setup. Yeah, the color even. Mm. So so it's really it's really difficult for me to like move on. But yeah, but um, I I realized that there are also Norwegians uh, that that family was not um, representative of the entire Norwegian society. But mm. because people who helped me out of that situation are also Norwegians, mm. even some of their family members. And not all of them actually. Some of the the siblings of the, my host dad were also the first one. The, the first, first one. The yeah. first yeah. one. They're also like um, compassionate, mm. but they're. I'm not sure of the family um, dynamics there, but uh, I think the 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 host dad has nothing more. Uh, that has more power in terms of deciding and everything. Mm. So. Uh, as much as they wanted to help me, uh, they, they weren't that capable of helping me. Mm. Even the sick, uh, the critically ill uh, uh, family member mm. uh, was trying to comfort me. But mm. uh, I think the totality of the situation, not the person, the totality of the situation made me decide to like move out. Yeah. And um, it was like, yeah. It took me a lot of courage because during that time I was, yeah, I was not earning so much. I'm mm. just getting allowance, and I needed to send it to family back home for the, yeah, for the burial of my grandma and everything. And yeah, I'm I came from a single parent family, mm. where my mom is taking care of yeah us four siblings. So. There's nothing so much to to like mm. resources uh, we we really don't have so 
I told myself that I just need to move on and yeah, be resilient and maybe just just forget about that that situation. So so that was that was the first time to mm. answer you. That was yeah. a very long answer, but no. that was the first the, the, the answer for the first question. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So when it came with your second and third home when mm. you became an old pet, mm. what was the experience like? Was was that was that better than the first, or is it you have recurring things also happening in the second and third home too? Yeah, the the second family, uh, they're like more of uh, they 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 have uh, adult kids already, and but they have their <laughs> their issues of their own. Mm. They end up getting uh, divorced and everything, mm. so it wasn't, but not directly. Uh, towards me, uh, I felt like uh, with my second family, I felt like I was uh, I I was enrolled to the Norwegian course, mm. but later I found out that he did not pay, so I had this first in Casa experience living in Norway like for only roughly two years. But I didn't find out about that mm. not before or not after I'm I'm finished with the au pair mm. program, so so. I, I I learned about these things uh, really uh, the, the the hard day, so mm. so I uh, he, but there the couple was very like unlike the two they they like very, yeah, accommodating and they don't have a daughter so I was like their daughter and I felt that, and it's just like they uh, like I said they have their issues of their own mm. but um, they helped me with registering FOS at the time and with my studies uh, because I, I think at that time I'm almost finished with all the requirements in Norwegian. Mm. I got, yeah, I became fluent in speaking Norwegian during my stay with them and that is like less than two years or uh, yeah, roughly a, a year. Mm. But I need to move out because yeah, they they having their marital yeah, issues, yeah. Mm. so it's a little bit complicated with me also in the house uh, because yeah, the two other are not really living with them because they're adults. So mm. my my task was mostly at home, taking mm. care of the home and yeah. Mm. So yeah, that was a different experience and uh, yeah, I felt like there. Were, yeah, there was no discrimination with second family. Mm. It's just that some issues, but no, yeah, mm. not the, like the first. <laughs> yeah, mm. it's, it sounds like with the first one, um, I guess you're supposed to be just be taking care of one family. Yeah. Mm. And I guess like uh, they have broken the law, I guess, in, in yeah. a contract mm. way, mm. Uh, where you have to take care of. I'm guessing like three families actually, you know, their mm. own as well as mm. like two mm. other families that are also involved in. So actually, that probably two two families in that case. Um, mm. And I think like, you know, uh, thank you for sharing again um, your story and also um, that kind of led you to that point of thinking of you know taking your own life. You know, I think it's in my own. And when I'm listening to your story, it felt like it's an accumulation mm. of stress. And it sounds like you didn't take a break. They didn't allow you to take a break either. Yeah. And when you don't have a break, you're exhausted. Mm. And, mm. you know, on top of that, you, you lost your grandma. And the whole entire stress, mm. it, it puts you in a different space mm. of mm. mind. Mm. And you couldn't get out. Mm. You know, it took you 10 months to, to get out. And I, yeah. to, to survive that, that time, mm. you know, with a family who has been... You know, um, you know, abusing the system or misusing the system, uh, for one thing, and on top of that, you know, not treating you right. Mm. Um, and that it was my very first time living abroad, actually, very first time to take a, an international flight, mm. very first time for me to be away from my family, like no chance of getting a weekend stay with them. Mm. So it's like. I was in an entire new world mm. where I was alone, mm. no network, no friends, and people that are my, like, everyone's my bosses. Mm. And there's, like, enough, um, like, there's not enough for me to, to, to think about myself because I needed to, like, 
accommodate all the requests, accommodate the, or fulfill all the tasks, and uh, yeah, do do it the right way in Norway mm. to yeah to stay in Norway, mm. to to have later opportunities maybe, but mm. uh, yeah, the the cause of my mental health maybe. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it definitely has a, um, mm. an impact in your mental health, and mm. I think like the consistency of. Um, of them not giving you a break for mm. one thing um, and also you mentioned a little bit about how they almost don't really care about your culture it's just like mm. it, it, I, yeah. I, I don't know exactly what um, that kind of experience is um, during that process did they say anything did they like point out anything about your culture that made you feel uncomfortable uh, in any way? Uh, and I know I was like, of course, cooking, like, and here's the host moms that saying that oh, you're, you're using too much soy sauce. And uh, <laughs> and then afterwards, I cook, I cook something with a, a Filipino dish with tomato sauce. And I didn't know that the carrots was expired. So I just used it. It came from the, the fridge and I said, oh, why did you use that? It's already expired and uh, okay. So so there's always this side comments and I was like, okay, may, maybe it's not, yeah, this is not the, that not the thing that they wanted me to do. Maybe mm -hmm. I just need to stop introducing them, my mm -hmm. culture, my, my the food, because um, yeah, in, in our culture, this is like well celebrated. This dish is something that you need to like, to, to have more rice, to like finish because it's so delicious like mm. so so for me it's like maybe a wrong family to introduce my culture mm. to so because you kind of have to reduce yourself right you kind of feel maybe you need to minimize yourself to kind of mm. fit so, so, in, mm. you know? so it's always like thinking okay less of me and more of them mm. it's like that was like the 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 feeling I had before that, uh, yeah, maybe they, they don't really need some, uh, yeah, uh, some input from me, mm. from my mm. background. Mm. Maybe they just need me to assist them in their daily life. Mm. And now, like, coming back to, you know, the work that you do because of this experience that you have, I understand you're exposed to uh, other stories mm. as mm. well. Um, could you say um, something about, or rather, um, is there any story that you heard that really impacted you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I would just like also to say that uh, we relaunched FHS, right? We I founded FHS in 2013. We relaunched it in 2020 uh, in the height of another typhoon plus COVID. Mm. And during that time, I told myself because I, yeah, is that I was like seven years after the the au pair experience. Mm. I've already yeah uh, have a stable life. I could say mm. that I am a Norwegian citizen already. I have like a totally different person from the person that came to Norway like mm. in twenty twelve, and I am already married to my wife. Mm. and uh, pretty stable in the work mm. and have enough time and my mental health is on top mm. I told myself uh, I needed to this is a tribute to the previous Sally we came here in Norway seven years ago helpless hopeless mm. and frustrated of the system or maybe the experience only mm. and reach out to the people who might be experienced who might be on the shoes that I was uh, I was in before mm. so I told them that um, the organization should not only focus on Filipinos in the Philippines helping them um, during the calamities but also Filipinos and other minor minority groups who are living in Norway and having a difficult life or maybe a challenging one and yeah and then we the, the first priority for me is to invite au pairs mm. because I was thinking of Maybe there's a lot of yeah Sally's out there mm -hmm. with the same stories or uh, yeah uh, that that might be in a difficult situation. No one to talk to, feeling alone, no network, no help. Maybe we can be there and mm -hmm. provide you some light and provide you yeah our comfort mm -hmm. and knowledge and about your rights and everything. Yeah. So so we we started with that 
and um, it was a good respond, response. Mm. So we have a lot of volunteers and members who are, with, mm. yeah, who are here as au pairs. And in 2021, then I started about like, uh, yeah, tell me how, how is it now uh, as being an, uh, as an au pair here in Norway? Has it changed like <laughs> after the, the period I was away right. in that, that, that situation? Has it improved? Because mm-hmm. I've heard we have the Caritas Pair Center and yeah. So I was just like curious mm. how are they uh, yeah, experiencing right now. And yeah, it, it was not to my surprise that there are still um, problems. There are still mm. sad stories. So I, I told them that um, uh, we would like to, to produce a short film on this. And it was not so easy to get their stories, um, uh, primarily because they're still on that situation. Mm. They're still on, with the family. And so speaking up means that you're starting a war with the host family that is providing you a place to stay and food and allowance. So, But I told them that this would be a safe zone for you. You could provide us your story in an anonymously uh, way and we are not to expose your identity but rather uh, come up with a short film uh, wherein the primary uh, characters are representing all the difficult situations or the the the, uh, the the ones that have so so I've actually uh, wrote the script and directed the, the entire film out from the uh, emails, messages that we have received. Mm. So this is actually a compilation. So um, so I can, I can recall the four characters with one. Uh, with, uh, she has more of a trouble back in the Philippines and yeah, coming to Norway as an au pair. Even, the, even though she has a child of her own already. And mm. that is actually not allowed. And the one is a registered nurse. This is like more of my story. Mm. And it was, it was as, uh, assigned to work with a um, family, um, assuming a role of a nurse more than an au pair. And another is an au pair who was, um, is more of a... Uh, exposed to to people who took advantage of of the character ended up being pregnant mm. and the father would like to take the responsibility for the child yeah. and, and that is like the main problems that they have they have also like many problems on the side and the mm. other one was um yeah uh, exposed to to uh, exploitation here in norway mm. uh, so, so that would depict the, the, the stories of some of the pairs, not only Filipino pairs, but that would depict also stories of people yeah, exposed to exploitation, to, uh, yeah, to abuse or uh, taking advantage of, and uh, a misuse of uh, the, the pair system, and also uh, representing uh, but pairs also who, who were pretty aware of their roles and responsibilities in order, but um, chose not to, to like follow it strictly. So in that uh, film, we would like to, to, to showcase to people that um, these are the issues, uh, like based on the story. So mm-hmm. this is not like to generalize. These are the issues that we have found out and uh, not only on the part of the host, the system, but also the pairs, and we've invited Caritas and Humans for Humans. Actually, we've discussed this film and talked about the uh, possible solutions. But yeah, so so but the the, the problem is um, uh, that they came in the media or that the politicians uh, came with this uh, suggestion to like uh, uh, end this program, like oh, not pursue mm. this anymore because of the issues. So, so, so from that time, I think that was the last project and we were silent 
about mm. the issues. So this is again the first time after two years and talking about the issues because I think no one else would like to. Mm. <laughs> and I think it, it's really important to emphasize as well that um, the decision to, to kind of shut down the program mm. is not addressing the problem. No. You know, because I think like, you know, um, we had this discussion before, like, okay, if the foreign students come over here, for example, you know, uh, and complain about, you know, discrimination and biases or whatever, um, are you going to shut out all the foreign students from coming in then? Mm -hmm. Or if a tourist come over and complain about Norway, are you going to shut out all the tourists coming over? Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, I feel like it's just like uh, them not taking responsibility mm -hmm. um, on the actions of the host mm. and actually setting up the tools, the apparatus mm. uh, to support US au pairs. Mm -hmm. um, and by saying shutting down a program is also silencing you um, and the community for mm. speaking up. Mm. And that in this action, you're reinforcing discrimination. You're mm. normalizing and continue to perpetuate racism uh, to continue to happen because this is very specific to the au pair community. Mm. Mm. And by doing so, in my opinion, when I heard you telling me this is, you know, I get angry. You know, I get really, really angry with this because it's like, do you actually understand what you're doing as politicians? You know, by saying backhanded, oh, we just, you know, mm -hmm. shut down the program. Um, and when it's affecting a whole entire ethnic community mm -hmm. um, in, in, in such a way that you should be taking responsibility, a mm -hmm. social responsibility to make sure that the au pairs are protected. You should be mm. upholding the legal mm. system and arming them with the knowledge that you have and the insight you have mm. to be able to say, we do not allow this. Mm. If they are making such a radical decision to say, shut down the program, I would like to have the same amount of energy and radicalism to say, let's shut down racism, let's mm. shut down discrimination, let's shut down an abuse. That's what we should be looking at. Mm. And the mm. fact that you've been silenced for two years, mm. two years, mm. and then for you to be brave enough to now speak up again, it just goes to show for me like how the silencing culture in Norway and the power of that by dismissing a whole group of people of their experiences has such an effect, and especially people from po political power of the very, very highest top, to also do that to a community like yours. Mm. They hold so much accountability to your silence. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to put that down and, 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 and really explicitly say that, because I think um, if we don't explicitly say it and hold, hold accountability, I don't mm. think change will happen, mm. in honesty. Mm -hmm. So that's my little rant. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, so, so drawing back on to, to after being, being kind of silenced and, uh, until now, mm. um, what is your plan then? What is, what is uh, FHS's plan to, to kind of um, solve, I guess, uh, a little bit of the, the, the issues that has already mentioned here today? Mm. Yeah, so... Uh, I, I chose to speak up today because I'm still really uh, hopeful that the government would do a better action rather than shutting out the program. Because this open opportunity is not only for me, uh, now I'm doing a lot of work for the society, not only a as a nurse, I'm also an interpreter, as also an organization leader. And uh, if Oh, I gave up like uh, 10 years ago with that experience. So uh, you might lose a good resource person. And uh, there's a lot of like me who have this kind of, uh, like we, we took from uh, uh, with us all the, the, the skills and knowledge that we have. And to experience that, that would be like uh, a waste of a, a good resource person. So I would like to, to emphasize that there are there's a lot of benefits of having the this pair program and with, with shutting it down it's like a, a quick fix that would, uh, that would not like fixing everything that was like trying to avoid things that may be uncomfortable to to like um talk about and this is not 
uh, for me, it's not the way that politicians should address this. Because you politicians, we need to, to be more aware that the Norway is becoming more of more multicultural. It is actually a goal to, to be more accommodating of other culture and promote their rights. And from like like a closing and a cultural exchange program, that would like uh, provide an, a sense of impression that Norway is not really open f- uh, to, to, to other culture than their own. And now, as a Norwegian citizen, I would like to like promote that the people with different background, ethnic uh, ethnic uh, background, should be welcome in in yeah, not only through au pair program, but this should be a good start. And um, uh, like I, I I told you that I'm working as an interpreter. Uh, there, I found also a lot of uh, yeah some issues in discrimination but on the other side on the brighter side i found also that there are norwegian working in the government who are actually uh, taking action of knowing the culture they, they we call up the uh, you call it cultural interpreter there are people like they uh going extra mile to like accommodate the needs of people with uh, different uh, immigrant backgrounds so you have people who have this who understand that it's important to meet and to have the equal uh, treatment to all living here in Norway. Not even in Norway, in Tyrell, that is possible. You have people who have this sense of understanding that uh, no matter yeah, what your background is, the color of skin and everything, you are welcome here in Norway and you'll be treated equally. Is it not that the, the goal of the Norwegian government? So if we are to invest more of those uh, people like professionals because like I was like very became very happy when I, when I started to to do this the interpreter like two years ago also like meeting people Norwegian background which is very um, passionate about um, fighting for the rights of the the the, the immigrant people are like okay so like I said um, now I, I'm I'm totally move on on that situation, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I'm like uh, uh, if I am to meet them because we're in the same field, the doctor, the host and the pharmacist, the hostman, I would like to 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 like uh, to talk to them and tell them that uh, they're forgiven and uh, the that I learned so much and that. Uh, the experience became an inspiration of the important work that we're doing now in FHS. And I really do hope that they also yeah, have learned for, from that experience and that there, there is a better way of resolving things rather than like, yeah, putting it aside. So um, my plan uh, onwards would be like, yeah, I, I'm... Hmm. I, 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 like discrimination, racism, this has gone through decades, many years. So this is something that we cannot resolve on a single, yeah, a single interview or something mm-hmm. like this. But my plan is to, to, yeah, to, sp- to continue to speak up. Although mm-hmm. I'm pretty nervous at the start of this, but to continue <laughs> to speak up of the rights, if, even though there's, uh, there's just me and some few who would like to speak up and make um, the government uh, uh, aware of, of the experience and at the same time make them aware that uh, there, there are people, there are Norwegians that uh, really uh, see, uh, yeah, uh, have this, this competence of accommodating people and, uh, and uh, like um, counter uh, countering the, the the discrimination racism and if we have if we are to focus on this focus on the solution not on disregarding the problem mm. it would take so much of the energy it would take so much of yeah of you as politicians but it would provide a better future not only for us with immigrant backgrounds but the entire Norway that people in the future generation would realize that we are living in the same world, that we are actually entitled of all the goods of the earth. 
uh, whether you are born in this first world country or other places in the world. And I think like, you know, um, you know, before we, we had this interview, we also talked about you mm. as an interpreter. Mm. You, there, there are certain things like you're forced into to doing a literal translation work yeah. and interpretation, which has kind of led us down to this path when you're talking about like mm. uh, why there's also a need for like cultural interpreters, like, you know, mm. understanding mm. culture and in, interpreting that as well mm. uh, within your work, because even though you are um, want to be neutral and, and, mm. and having to uh, um, translate word by word, mm. but when it's translated into another culture, it, there's a totally different meaning and it can be mm. misinterpreted. Mm. Mm. And so you need to have that intercultural understanding, you have that intercultural communication mm. as well for, on your part of your job. Mm. And I think that that's really interesting to, to kind of note uh, on that and how, um, you know, your, your job mm. and the insight you have, and like you said, like, because of your background, you mm. see things mm. that someone else won't be able to see, and you can see the kind of misunderstanding and miscommunication uh, that mm. could happen mm -hmm. as well in that intersection, and you're in that intersection mm. um, to, to kind of be able to solve um, the issues that you see. Mm. Uh, on top of that, you, you also mentioned as um, being a nurse specialist as well, you mm. know, for there, um, um, you also experienced uh, discrimination, and I just wanted you to, to kind of dive into maybe one example, mm. um, you know, before we, we kind of move on to, to nearing the end of this, this interview, uh, of what that experience was like, you know. Mm, yeah, okay. I can, I can begin with the uh, experience as a nurse. So, yeah, as, as of now, so I'm part of a resource group also. Uh, 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 we're working on solutions also uh, uh, for the government to see that there are also racism among us uh, immigrant nurses. So, so that is something that, yeah, we're on the process. But uh, personally, I've experienced uh, almost like, yeah, side comments. But recently, yeah, because like I said, now I'm more of, I'm more knowledgeable. I'm, I'm seeing those comments or uh, comments from people who are less knowledgeable about the reality that we are actually uh, yeah yeah that, that we are actually equally um, worth it of, of respect so so yeah like side comments that the the recent uh, situation that I've experienced was uh, yeah like uh, telling on my face that uh, me as um, a person with uh, immigrant background is something should be what I, I just need to recall what the exact uh, the exact term that he used like yeah it's like more f um, verbal threat that uh, this is a patient in, in in our workplace that he came there with a drunk friend and he needs help like ASAP and it is like at 3 in the morning I'm working as a yeah, during that time I'm working at night, and um, and I said that it's that it's that the 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 way he approached was like, do this and this, and and then he came to me and said that we really cannot accommodate you commanding us because we have procedures because uh, it should we need to protect ourselves because we don't know who are coming because he came not like uh, reserving an appointment or something he came like. Uh, ringing on our door and with a really, really like uh, scary voice and uh, like uh, approach. And I told him that uh, we have this procedure that you need to go there and there. That and then uh, he he like told me that I know your your boss and you yeah you, you people with immigrant backgrounds really don't know how to work here. So so. Yeah, but but mm. I, I brush it off because I I, I need to be professional. Uh, but uh, that is, I think, the latest that I could recall. There are, of course, something about, yeah, about if, yeah, can I speak with people who is Norwegian, for example? Can, uh, can my mm. father get a Norwegian nurse? Mm. I like that. And in this resource group also, I've heard a lot of stories about yeah, because most of them are people of color and say that, yeah, they, 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 
there there's very awful experiences i i really can't recall the worst but uh, there's more of uh, they're not treated with respect as mm. a professional health professional not only by the patients or the family of the patients but also co-workers mm. or even their uh, leaders or bosses so there's a lot of work to do mm. on the racism part and uh, yeah sadly I, i'm not sure how far we can go with this project but uh, still we are doing something and uh, we are to to to, to continue mm. working on this because This is an actual problem. Mm. This is an actual problem. Uh, although some of you would like to, yeah, to not take this mm. so seriously. And I, and I would say that, you know, thank you for speaking up because I think it's like, um, like you said, there are other people who, who are like you, you know, who had the same story, you know, there might be another Sally out there mm. who's listening in and, mm. and need that kind of support mm. um, and share. And I think, You know, it, it goes back to it again, like, you know, shutting down the old pair system um, mm. or the program doesn't help because it's like racism, biasness and prejudice is still living, mm. it's still going. Mm-hmm. And I think like that is the root of the problem, really, mm. and not the program itself uh, no. as such. Um, and I, I think it goes to show like, you know, you being a nurse and interpreter, you also experience the same thing. You know, it doesn't matter which role you're going to be, mm. you're an au pair or a nurse or, mm. or whatever, you're mm. still experiencing um, mm. discrimination in, in all sorts of ways. Um, and I think like the work you're doing is, and I understand this as well in your community as well, mm. because of um, coming out and speaking up two years ago has also created some, some issue within the community as well in mm. the sense that if one Filipino speaks up, you know, mm. what would happen to the rest, you know, now mm. the program is going to shut off. And I, I mm-hmm. think that that has a ripple effect. And I hope that, um, I hope anyway, in, in the mm. Filipino community that seeing you speak up is an act of bravery. And also it's, it does make progress is not going to be easy mm-hmm. road, uh, a path. And I think anyone who is dealing with this topic, it is difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, and it almost hard to see, you know, change sometimes, you know, but oh. I think like this mm-hmm. is the beginning of it all. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's, um, it's great for you to continue this work. And I, and, you know, sitting here and, and listening to your story, it's, it's very inspiring and admirable. You know, and I know you said you moved past on it, and mm. I think it's sometimes those stories, you know, that happened to us even a long time ago, it still stays with us. Mm. Um, and sometimes um, we move forward, um, but the same issue is still occurring. If you see mm. what I mean, mm. um, that keeps occurring. Um, so I guess I will end by saying thank you. And mm. if there is anything else you you want to add uh, or address that I haven't asked. Mm. Oh, I would just like to thank you also for for the opportunity and thank you for not uh, yeah not forgetting about the au pairs because when no one else are talking about the au pairs man, it's easy to to forget about the au pairs so so thank you for shedding light on this issue and thank you for yeah covering uh, yeah providing an entire uh, show program for for <laughs> yeah for the honor of the au pairs and um Yeah, so so I really hope that this. Yeah, I, I do hope. I, I have this uh, kind of feeling that this would yeah would be an uh, instrument to to the change that we are seeking. So yeah, we just hope, and we just need to pursue what we're doing right now. Hmm. And you're doing a good job. <laughs> so so I would like to thank you and. Yeah, kudos. <laughs> yeah. So, so those listening in or watching in, do follow the FHS, you know, and if there's anything you would like to contribute and, and help out, you know, reach out to Sally. Mm. Um, we can, I think we can put a link somewhere and mm. you will definitely see uh, some kind of contact. Um, thank you again and I hope we both get some rest tonight as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. thank you. And see you yeah. in the next round, <laughs> I guess. Hello. Bye.